Welcome to the Equip Podcast. Here you'll find conversations from people of all different walks of life, sharing their experiences, the things the Lord has taught them, and things to equip you. Equip is based on Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, that talks about equipping God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. That is our goal here, to build you up and equip you through seasons of ups and downs in life. Welcome back to the Equip Podcast. I'm your host, Taylor Gibson, and today I'm joined by Taylor Newton. Taylor serves on staff at Green Acres in our broadcast ministry, and this summer she and her husband traveled to Africa on a mission trip with our church, and I've asked her to share about that today. So welcome, Taylor. Hello. Taylor, what initially drew you and Andrew's interest in going on this trip to Africa? So right off the bat, first question, we're kind of going into story time. I love it. So one of our first Sundays here, when we first came to Green Acres, I remember us leaving Sunday morning and Andrew saying, you know, I feel kind of like God is softening my heart towards missions. And I said, wow, okay. And then he specifically said, but not Africa. (laughs) Of course. I said, wow, okay. Well, that was specific. And I didn't really think much of it after that. And then fast forward, we had a conversation with some great loving people in our lives, Daryl and Beverly Flynn. They had just come back from a trip to Kenya and they were just telling us about Kenya and telling us about how great everything was. And Daryl kind of off to the side said, you guys should come to Africa with us. And immediately Andrew said, nope, I haven't lost anything in Africa and I'm not going there to find it. (laughs) And we said, wow, okay, what a response. And Daryl just very simply said, Uh, I'm going to pray that the Lord changes your heart on that. And again, I didn't think much about it or much after that, because I thought if God wants us to go somewhere, he will send us and make it happen. Well, the next day, Andrew sent me a text message and he said, find out what the dates of Africa are. I said, oh, what's happening? What's, what's the Lord stirring in your heart? Um, So I found out and I gave him the information And Daryl continued to pray and continued to reach out to him. And we had some obstacles that had to do with just kind of work and our calendar and schedule. But then once Andrew really said, hey, if this and this happen, we're going to Africa. And it seemed like overnight that God paved a way and made sure that those things were in place for us to go. So then Andrew said, I don't know how we're going to fund this trip. And we were fully funded in six hours. Oh, my gosh. I said, "Okay, I think God wants us to go to Africa. So that was kind of the story time of how God provided and worked to pave our way to Africa. So Andrew was very anti-Africa in the beginning. Did you have any feelings about missions, Africa, anything? So I went on my first international missions trip when I was 16, a sophomore in high school. And I've always had a love for missions, for going overseas, for local missions, for helping people right here in our backyard. I've always had an open heart to it. And going into marriage, I just said, hey, like, Lord, I want you to send us together. I don't want to make anything about me or just my own like selfish ministry. This is for you. And I was just kind of waiting on God to work in Andrew's life, I guess. I love it. So how did you prepare yourself ahead of the trip? So there, of course, are like physical things you prepare for. You have to, you know, get anti-malaria medication. You get your passport. There's different things you have to pack because you're going to a place that is not the United States. Mm -hmm. But aside from the physical preparations, I just have to say we have such a great missions team here because... They're experienced. They answered questions upon questions upon questions with so much grace and also excitement with us. Mm -hmm. They are so knowledgeable, so helpful. They said, hey, this is what it's going to look like. This is where you're going to stay. They left no stone unturned when it came to what to expect Mm -hmm. and leading up into the trip. Now, on a spiritual level, I will say there was also preparation that I felt necessary. Uh, I reached out to someone who was also somebody who funded us and said, hey, look, I know that there will be times of temptation and times of distraction that will show up. So would you please be my prayer partner 
Mm. in preparing for this trip. Like if I reach out to you and say, hey, this is what we're going on, please pray for me. And then while we are on the trip, would you commit to praying for us every day? Mm -hmm. And of course that person did. And that was a huge blessing to just know that there was someone stateside and someone who had our back that I could just say was my personal prayer warrior. Mm. On top of that, going back to saying, I knew that there was going to be some distractions that would come because we know the enemy does not want the gospel to be shared. Yeah. So we also know from Jesus's time in the wilderness in Luke 4, that the enemy, that Jesus used scripture to defeat the enemy and to back temptation away. Mm. So every time something that felt like a distraction or a spiritual attack showed up in our lives, I just went straight to scripture and was reading it out loud and mm. just praying scripture over our situation, specifically the week that we left. The day before we left, the AC went out in our home. Sure. And both of our trucks started having problems oh, gosh. and like not simple problems, like my transmission was jerking, you know, uh, stuff you just can't fix at the old grease monkey. Uh -huh. Anything that I thought was attempting to rob our joy or distract from the mission that God had placed in front of us, I just bathed it in scripture. Mm, that's really good. What was it like to go on a mission trip with your spouse? It was nothing short of rewarding. Mm. So I mentioned how I went on mission trips previously in high school and in college, but there's nothing like experiencing God's creation and seeing his hand at work with your spouse right there by your side. Mm. And it doesn't matter what um, has happened back at home or what might be going on back at home when you're side by side with your spouse and you're out there sharing the gospel and you're seeing lives being changed, that you realize that this is the stuff that really matters. Mm -hmm. We're spreading and growing the kingdom. And outside of that, like there's no greater reward than getting to do that with your spouse. I imagine it would probably be really strengthening for your marriage too. A hundred percent. Yeah. That's really cool. Now, a lot of times we see specific age group trips or mission trips, like student trips, college, young adult trips. What was it like being part of a multi-generational trip? So at first, our honest expectation was we were the young people going because everybody else, for the most part, was older. And we thought we were the muscle. We're the ones that are going to be pulling the luggage and carrying across airports and piggybacking people when they needed it. You know, we just didn't know what to expect. We just thought we're the young people, we're the muscle. And we were totally fine with that. But the reward outside of that, like the, the reward for having a multi-generational uh, trip, oh my goodness, mealtime became just like wisdom time. Mm. And the conversations just organically happened about sharing about where people have been and trials and just the overabundance of what God has done in each other's lives, uh, just sitting around every mealtime and just hearing everyone's stories and what God has done for them, what God's done through them. And again, just like I said, when you're ministering alongside shoulder to shoulder with your spouse, you're also shoulder to shoulder with these other people. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know anybody aside from the leaders of the trip before going. So we had a 17 hour plane ride with total strangers. That'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you get really comfortable really quick. There was also uh, another younger girl who was on the trip with us. So it was also unique to not just be fed wisdom at all times, but to also see someone else and say, hey, I have also been in your shoes and I might not know your specifics, but I am familiar with these feelings or this emotion. And mm -hmm. this is how I can tell you God has promises for you or how God provides for you in this way. And um, it's just really neat to be amongst people that are from all different backgrounds and um, getting to share the gospel together. How long was the trip? Total was 10 days. Okay. But 
it that takes. includes travel time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what did the Lord do in your life in the trip? I have a strong eagerness to talk about Jesus. Like I will get so excited and I will stand on any stage, get behind any microphone, be not on a stage or not on a microphone. I get really excited and just love talking to people. I love hearing about people's stories. So for me on this trip, though that that is the purpose of an evangelical trip of getting out in front of people and being bold to proclaim the gospel, God really showed me what it's like to be silent mm. in some times and to watch others get eager to share and to allow others to share um, and just getting to listen and to sharpen others in throughout their experience. So while, yes, I was very eager and very excited, the Lord said, hey, remember, this is not about you mm -hmm. and just about what you have to share. This is 100% about God, and you want this to be gospel-centered. So allow me to use the other people I've equipped to go with you. That's really good. Any cool moments you want to share? Our first day of getting to go out to uh, the, a local village area, um, it was the same area we were planting a church in. And there was almost this pressure of we have a handful of hours to go around and tell as many people as we can we're having church here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So you're you're kind of doing two things in one. You're telling people why Christ matters to you in your life and how he has saved you. Mm -hmm. And then on the backside of that conversation, talking about the importance of um, being connected to a local church. And hey, we're actually planting one of those here tomorrow. So join us at 900 Hours. We had gone around this particular village area with our translator, and we had approached this same house way towards the back of the village. Previously, nobody was there. Uh, it seemed very vacant to me. It didn't seem like something someone was actively living in. And we did another uh, pass through another street, but our translator wanted to go back to that house again. And I remember at the time thinking, nobody was clearly living there. And I'm very glad I did not discourage that because when we got there, there was a dad and his four children all sitting there. And they were so gracious. They provided seats for us. They just wanted to sit around and talk uh, and hear what we had to say. And I got to listen to Andrew present the gospel story and what the gospel meant to him, to this man who was clearly a father, clearly the provider of his home. And through our translator, we learned that he said, how can I be a Christian if I can't go to church on Sunday because I keep getting jobs taken away? And I have to work on Sunday to provide for my family. And you're sitting there next to his family. And you can see that they have old worn down clothes. And you can see that he's just doing his best. You know, some of them are sitting on a pot or just the dirt on the ground that they do not have much. And this father is doing everything he can to provide for them. Something that happened uh, in Mine and Andrew's personal story, though not as comparable, um, he, Andrew, had experience with struggling with, hey, sometimes I need to work and hustle on Sunday just to make our ends meet. Mm -hmm. And Andrew was able to pray with that man and to tell him, I believe that God will provide for you if you will just have the faith to believe in Jesus Christ. and to have faith in him. And he, sh Andrew shared his, his personal feelings, just kind of like a very much man to man provider to provider moment. Mm -hmm. Well, we actually left that situation. We prayed for the man and prayed for his family. Um, and it was time for us to leave and to go back to the bus at the end of the day, but we did not have a firm decision from him. So I was not confident how we left him spiritually. Mm -hmm. The next day we had church and I just remember Andrew looking at me and smiling and saying, look right there. And coming up the hill from the back of that village was not just that man, but also his son. Aww. And he said, 
again, we learned through our translator, I had enough faith to come to church today. And sometimes that's all the faith that we need. I mean, we are told it's the strength of a mustard seed. But to me, that just spoke, I mean, mounds and mounds of that this man had enough faith to not go to work and to lead his family to church. Gosh, that's cool. It gives me chills, but it might just be because it's cold in here, but I'm going to say it's it's chills. It's chills. In addition to that, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, being on fire and, and, and just having gone through situations like that while you're in the country. I came back with a fire to just share my experience with everybody. But of course, when you first come back, people just want to hear about the elephants you saw or, you know, kind of unique African stuff. And in sharing that same story with a girl at a coffee house, she ended up coming to Christ after we had come back. So although the mission trip had ended, Jesus's mission had not, and he still had a plan even for a girl at a coffee house in Tyler who just needed to hear about a trip to Africa. That is so cool. I love how he works in those little details. 100%. What advice would you share for someone considering going on a mission trip? I would say we have too much support, prayer, and resources to not go. Mm -hmm. And... You should go without expectation. Um, Ask God to reveal and clean you of any fears and selfish ambition you might have. Psalms 139, 23 says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And I think if we were to truly pray that prayer and to ask that of God, we would see that um, he does have a plan for us and to be mission minded. And whether that's again, right here in your backyard or whether that's um, overseas somewhere that you've never been before, I think that you should go and be bold. Okay. So as you know, we close every episode of the Equip podcast the same way. What is something you're learning and what is something you're loving? So in addition to Uh, Africa and missions. Andrew and I are also very passionate about marriage ministry. And we've uh, recently surrounded ourselves with a couple of couples who've been married 30 plus, 40 plus years. And it's been so fun to see the fruits of how those couples have loved one another through hard times and good times. And to see the fruits of being married 30 and 40 years where we have not been married near that long yet. And uh, to also just learn maybe ways that I respond to situations. They might not be sinful, but what if there's still yet a better way I could Mm. be responding to that situation? So that's been really fun to learn from older, wise women. And what about what are you loving? I am loving that it is fall. Mm. I love fall so much. I wish the weather would learn it. Well, it's working on it. It's but we're trying. So, yeah. Uh, I think if we bake more pumpkin things, then the weather will figure it I'm out. I'm here for it. I will taste test any and all pumpkin things. Mm. Sounds great. And, you know, Andrew, he cowboys for a living. We do a lot of stuff outside. And doing things outside is a lot more pleasant when it's less than 100 degrees. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Taylor, thank you for being here today and just sharing your story. I hope that it has been an encouragement to those listening. I hope so as well. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to the Equip Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to be the first to know when a new episode drops. And follow us on social media to stay connected. We're at GABC underscore women. See you next time.